what is up everyone it is your boy Fry, and today we're going to be looking at another how to uh tutorial basically how to sound like the migos and yeah pretty much sourcing the sound from kind of the culture album a bit before you know uh, i don't know who knows the song jackie chan by gucci man and migos but that is one of my favorite songs and yeah pretty much i don't know over the years the migos have really had like a real kind of bando sound to their music uh you know i think quavo records them and then slightly mixes obviously before sending out to an engineer so you know you do tend to get the very trebly vocals very kind of uh on the spot recording so we try to emulate that the stig is uh you know happily recorded some stuff for us and we'll check that out uh this was called the gucci man template before it suddenly became the migos template but hey it is what it is so let's check it out Rollin' a pop up in traffic, don't look at price, gotta have it. Look up my girl, she exotic. Why do we don't need no logic? Selling the work like it's magic. You cannot disco, you panic. We wanna cash the one plastic. Stig on the track, now it's classic. Stig on the track, now it's classic. Rollin' up gas, it's organic. Stretching the work like elastic. Still sipping lean like italic. Don't look at price, gotta have it. Cool, so that's um, that's how I would kind of uh, want the vocals to sound on Amigos kind of album. But unfortunately, uh, a lot of the time the, the vocals are really loud. So, you know, let's just try, you know, two alternative versions today. Uh, I just hope my vocal isn't too loud or my voice isn't too loud. But yeah, let's just check out a bit louder, right? So right now we're about at 0 0.9. Let's push the limit a bit harder and see um, how loud we can get. Rollin' the pop up in traffic, don't look at price, gotta have it. Look up my girl, she exotic. Why do we don't need no logic? Selling the work like it's magic. You cannot disco, you panic. So like around 4.6 is when it starts to really suffer. And you know, sadly, that's kind of how you know most of the culture album sounds to an extent. Um, you know, obviously hip hop is kind of more pop style now, so obviously the vocal is the most important part of the whole um kind of song, right? Because you want to hear the story they're telling. Um, you know, second, I would think is the, the bass kick and snare, obviously, you know, those kind of all fit together. But yeah, we'll just leave it at like, let's just say three for this tutorial sake. Um, it's really subjective to choose how loud, how much louder you want your vocal to be over the beat. Um, but yeah, let's pretty much break down our chain. So, you know, shout out Justin Omoy. I was checking out, or Omoy, I don't know how you say his so name, but I was checking out how he does this kind of, um, notch filtering, you know, just to kind of get rid of the room resonances. I think that's what he's trying to kind of get at. And yeah, that's the first thing that um, I did for the stick right there was just to kind of filter out any resonant uh, frequencies. So I'll just show you. Pop up in traffic, don't look at price, gotta have it. Look up my girl, she exotic. Why do we don't need no logic? Selling the and I don't really know if this is good or not. So um, I'm testing it out. You know, it's the first time um, me doing it. And I think it sounds okay. And my screen is going back to uh, kind of red mode. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you a little tip there. Shout out to Flux. I'm sorry that I, this is off topic, but... Uh, you know, Flux is an app that allows you to, um, you know, pretty much protect your eyes, right? So it goes back to a certain color. Uh, you won't see it on the uh, recording, but right now the screen is kind of browned out. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, kind of we're not doing any phasey stuff or anything like that. We're kind of keeping it really dry. Migo sound, you know, they don't really mess around with too much. I think it's Quavo. I don't know who's kind of going for the more sing-song style. This is not really orientated at that, but... Um, yeah, we'll go straight into the mono vocal. Obviously, I always take way too long to get into it. But, you know, as usual, 80 hertz cut, get rid of, rid of um, subharmonic information, subsonic information, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, generally, you know, I've modeled this after the um, studio kind of patchwork. I kind of went through their, uh, you know, list of stuff they have. And the Teletronics is definitely something that they use. Um, we have done this before. The uh, leveling amplifier, you can go check out. Um, the VST day, if you want to know more about leveling amplifiers, there's a million good reads on the internet if you want to know. But this is kind of modeling it. As you can see, I'm sure you got the settings down by now. And obviously, we're just doing general uh, de essing, so you can check Pop that up out. in traffic, don't look at price, gotta have it. Look up my girl, she exotic. Why do we don't need no logic? Selling the work like it's magic. You cannot disco, you panic. We wanna catch the one plastic. Stig on the track, now it's classic. And yeah, that kind of just saturates the. Um, mid and high end and anyway, shout out to my little uh, mic stand here 
But um, you know what my mic stands on there now. But yeah, this kind of saturates the, the mid and high end in a really nice way. I quite like that. Second off here is the tone, right? So this sets the initial sound. Uh, you know, Migos, all three of the Migos, they, their vocals are very kind of um, more mid-range and uh, treble orientated, right? I mean, uh, I've seen a bunch of other tutorials of people talking about it. But I think the most important thing to do in EQing is to get rid of before boosting, right? I mean, I think that's the most amateur thing. I've only recently started to kind of concentrate more on cutting. And I'm sorry, I'm itching so much. I went jogging early and, and uh, I don't know, man, the bush is all on me, man. <laughs> I haven't showered yet, so you know what it is, man. Uh, but yeah, the most important thing to do is is just the cut, 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 cut. So I'll just play you this uh, with and without and you can hear. Up, up in traffic, don't look at price, gotta have it. Look up my girl, she exotic. Why do we don't need no logic? Selling the work like it's magic. Woo! You cannot disco, you panic. Woo! We wanna cash... Up up in traffic, don't look at price card I have, but look up my girl, she exact. So yeah, that's pretty much why I call it the tone EQ, right? Because it is just kind of tonally adjusting things. I am kind of giving it a bump in the uh, kind of bass area just to make sure that it, it's kind of kicking with the, you know, the bass frequency. You know, you, you don't want it to clash, but you also don't want your um, vocal to kind of drown. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's pretty much that. The next thing is pretty much just to add some kind of taming EQ just to kind of you know, in increased intelligibility just to make sure that it, it, you know, your actual words aren't drowning out in the beat. Very subtle stuff, kind of carving out some of the unnecessary bass. And, you know, around 7,000 to 7,700 is where you, you kind of have the opportunity to get rid of um, quite nasty frequencies. So I'll just copy paste this and just. Pop up in traffic, don't look at price, got a half, but look up my gushy. So you can hear that's a pretty evil frequency that um, humans aren't really. <laughs> You know, we don't really listen to sounds like that, so you might as well get rid of that a little bit, little bit. You know, the uh, less is more, especially if you're doing a lot of uh, processing. Thankfully, um, FL Studios plugins are very clean and transparent, so even though we are stacking a bunch of plugins, we're not actually, you know, I think in the outboard days, the more and more hardware you used, obviously, the more uh, grainy your audio would get. So in the digital domain, we don't have to worry about that. Sweet. Cool. The next thing is obviously just, you know, another compressor just after EQ, because if you EQ after um, compression, like intense EQ, you will get an uncontrollable um, sibilance that you can't really cure. So it's important to kind of just do a bit of compression. You can set your attack and release variables all uh, voice dependent, you know what I'm saying? Bit more DSing, I'm pretty sure this is some intense DSing. Pop up in traffic, don't look at price got I have, but look up my gushy exotic. Why do we don't need no logic? Selling the work like it's magic. Yeah, and that's pretty much just taming the um the tss, tss, anything that pops up, it is taming that. But um once we've done all our taming, right? So we've pretty much done a whole bunch of just treatment and making sure that the vocals uh gelling with the beat. Obviously, uh, you know, you'd have to adjust these slightly just to make sure they all work, but I've really been enjoying this plugin lately and it is the, <coughs> excuse me, the Modern Exciter. And, you know, just to get that Migo sound, right? Damn, this is in the way. Just to get that Migo sound, uh, you know, we're boosting a bit of the high end. I'm, I'm sure they might be doing it. Or maybe there's just a certain EQ um, that they are boosting high. But uh, this really works well. I'll just play it with them without. Pop up in traffic. Don't look at price got I have. But look up my girl, she exotic. Why do we don't need no logic? Selling the work like it's magic. Woo! You cannot disco, you panic. Woo! We wanna catch the one. So yeah, as I say, less is more. We're not doing too much, you know. Uh, just very basic, just to kind of help it punch through. Um, and then we're just doing some final compression. Pop up in traffic. Don't look at price got I have. But look up my girl, she exotic. Actually, that's barely any compression. That is no compression at all. Might as well turn it off. And um, all you're doing is really using this as a volume knob, right? Just to kind of um, blend your track in now after you've done all of your tonal adjustments. Uh, that's just the kind of fader without having to turn the fader up or down. So yeah, that's pretty much it on the main vocal. Um, the background vocals are pretty interesting, right? Uh, very dim. All I'm really using it for with the stick is just to enhance the lower mid-range, right? But, ah, man. Just to enhance the lower mid-range and you'll hear it right here. So yeah, uh, we got two takes here and they're just hard pan left and right and then obviously just a uh, band pass, right? So if you watch the filter video, we're just doing some band passing right there and, you know, just general kind of bit of distortion just to make sure it kind of cuts through. 
as well as a bit of reverb which we're kind of using as a ghost reverb migos do tend to have a lot of um, kind of background reverbs even though we do have a main reverb channel uh you know using two different reverbs can kind of create a different uh, atmosphere effect so something might sit here and something else might sit further back for example so that's pretty much it on the backgrounds nothing too much but the most interesting thing is the uh ad libs and i think you know the migos kind of have taken the style from gucci man because if you listen to kind of the older gucci man and you listen to uh the trap god mixtapes and gucci still does it to this day i think his engineer i don't know who his engineer is but shout out to him because gucci man in my opinion is some of the best sounding ad libs in the game right um there is somebody in the comments of the videos that is always asking to do uh kind of gucci man ad libs and i understand why because they just sound so good so this is my kind of take on how uh, to achieve that sound basically what you want to do is you want to create two let me just move this you want to create two uh, ad lib tracks right because sometimes you might hear gucci man go yeah yeah from left to right so uh you can pretty much do something like this let me just solo these all for now <laughs> so yeah you can pretty much hear how damn clean those sound right and you know the way to do that is uh if you want you can do a bit of compression obviously just because you've got uh left and right you don't want them coming in at crazy levels but um the secret is you know reduce some of the the area where your main vocal is going to sit right so obviously this is kind of where um we are hearing the most important parts of the the mono vocal and then just pretty much use this again right um easy stuff i mean it, it just sounds amazing it really cuts through the mix and you hear when i bring back the main vocals so here you go without the doubles and we don't need no logic selling the work like it's magic you cannot disco you panic we want to catch the one plastic Stick on the track now it's classic. It's classic. Stick on the track now it's classic. classic. Bowling up gas it's organic. Stretching the work like elastic. You see and the excited also helps um bring out the the kind of more quieter elements, right? So it is pretty dangerous if you have a room that is just incredibly noisy. As you can see, uh the Stig is pretty blessed to have a really quiet room, right? Uh with a bit of acoustic treatment where there's no outside interference too much as you can see there the signal to noise ratio is really good i mean i hate to kind of get into this um ground basic stuff but you know the difference between the signal right which is what we want right which is voice in this case to noise which is barely audible there's no uh, noise if we just solo and we can hear a bit of noise right but it's not anything um that'll hurt you you know what i mean stick on the track now it's classic you see what I mean? So the difference between what we saw here and what we saw over here, right? Stick on a track is pretty big. So you always want that ratio to be pretty big. You don't want to have noise sitting at, for example, minus 29. I generally go for like minus um, 55 as a noise flow, I guess, uh, because that is workable and noise gate can easily deal with that. But, you know, you don't want to get yourself stuck in a corner where you've got great recorded uh, or great art but just really noisy you know what i mean because then you you end up spending a lot more time trying to treat these things more so than enhance them you know what i'm saying so yeah that's pretty much it i think uh that's all i can really show you in terms of the vocals in terms of the beat i will i wasn't really going to show anyone this but I, I think it's pretty cool that um you know you can make these little trap god effects uh you know gucci man style effects quickly stick on the track now it's classic you know, just kind of cool, interesting effects here. You go if you want to kind of uh, copy that. But the one thing that I did want to show is, again, the modern exciter, right? And if you have a beat, and I'll just play this. My bad. I'll just play this beat quickly, and you can just hear. Let me just turn off everything else. So get an idea of what the beat sounds like, the bass especially. Cool, right? So you just got an idea of what that sounds like. Now, if I turn this plugin off, right, which we've enhanced the bass a little bit, listen to how thin the bass sounds. Pretty boring, right? Really flat, very MP3 sounding. 
you know, that's the cool thing about excitation is at times, and I think this is modeling um, kind of the DBX style of excitation. I don't know if exciters generally do this, but um, if I can kind of uh, pull up just an EQ or something, right? You can just see that when, um, you know, an exciter might, I mean, this is some of them, right? When it boosts a certain frequency, right? So obviously it might be doing something like uh, this, right? In the low end. At the same time, it's going to be reducing um, another frequency somewhere else, right? So it might be doing that there and then reducing somewhere else. So I've got a little DBX that, that does that, something similar to that. So that's pretty cool with these plugins is that it's it's doing a lot more than just enhancing lows or enhancing highs. It's it's kind of balancing out the field, which generally works, but sometimes not. So that's a little cool uh, trick that I wanted to show you just, uh, you know, to enhance your beats if you, if you are confident in doing that. Uh, master presets, just general stuff that uh, I can't really say what to do because obviously the master bus is a very delicate uh, area. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, if you enjoy this little template, if you enjoy the sound of it, feel free to purchase it in the template below. Help support the channel and yeah, have a good one. Peace out.